Hello and welcome back to my channel, Evergreen Angel here. And in this video, I would like to help break down a couple of the mushrooms that I collected on my most recent trip, some ways that you can identify them and also ways that you could enjoy them um, as a meal. So the first mushroom, oh, and I should start by saying, this should not be your only source of information. Please do not watch this video and then go out and collect these mushrooms and consume them you should really have several sources as I have had so that you can feel the most confident about ingesting these safely so with that being said let's talk about the honey mushroom the honey mushroom is um, Amalaria malaya um, that's its Latin name it always lives on trees and woody shrubs so I usually find them right at the base, but technically it could just be poking right out of the wood. But I usually find it in clusters at the base of trees is the primary way that I find them. Like in the picture that you see um, there of them all grouped together right there at the base of that tree. Uh, these are small to medium sized mushrooms. Their cap is convex and usually measures between two to maybe five inches in diameter. The stipe or stem will usually be between two to maybe five inches in length. <clears throat> usually I would say closer to four than five, but I have seen some some taller ones. Um, they Because they're decayers, um, it makes it much easier for you to like identify them because they will always be up near the bases of these trees um, and these shrubs, which does help with that. And then you will see the stalk coming out in a way. So it's not like a shelf on the tree. You will always see a stalk or a stem or a stipe. Um, all of these are words for the same thing, by the way. Uh, the stipe is an off-white or tan color, and it does have a brown, almost scale-like appearance running down the stipe. Um, this brown or tan cap will always have a little white margin, uh, which the margin references to the outer rim of the cap right up where the cap starts to turn into gills on the underneath that area will have a white margin uh, it will have a skirt but if you find it young like you see in this example here as i did that skirt is actually caused from a little veil that is formed underneath the cap that protects the gills whilst they are forming. Once the gills have formed, that cap will expand and pull away from that veil, and that veil will drop down and create a little skirt. Uh, sometimes the skirt will fall away, in which case you'll just see a ring of where a skirt would be. Uh, the ring will usually be brown. If there's a skirt present, it'll look more white, and then around the edges of the skirt, you will see um, some dark browning. But in this example, there's no skirt, but it's because that veil has not pulled away yet. It is still intact. These are very young specimens. Um, I found it kind of slightly... Um, pulled away from the tree in the back and um, there are plenty of them and they they kill trees but they are a necessary part of the of the forest so I don't typically try to harvest mushrooms before they have started dropping their spores so as a safe practice for preserving mother nature I do typically tend to leave the younger specimens behind so they can do their job um, but with the honey fungus in this area in particular they have they have plenty to spare. So I went ahead and snatched these ones up. Uh, the gills will be white and it will also leave a white spore print. That is very important. White gills with a white spore print. Uh, the cap will, of, the will often have dark brown kind of freckly hairs on the top, especially as it comes to the center of the top. Um, and then as it as it gets older, that does tend to like fade and be a little bit less um, noticeable, but especially on the younger specimens, you will see these little hairs. So that is the honey mushroom. It has a very strong mushroomy taste that I really love using in just basically anything, but some people do have some stomach upset with these. So you want to make sure that you 
the first time that you're eating them, uh, first of all, that you are very, very confident about your, your identification of them first. And then you cook them really well and you ingest only a little bit. I would say like one mushroom, um, if it was a small one and then if it was a big one, I'd maybe cut the cap in half and just cook or just eat half of the mushroom cap. Um, just, and then give it a full day. Just see if your stomach kind of grumbles or bumbles or anything like that. Maybe just don't bother. Uh, I eat them just fine though, and they're absolutely delicious. Such a great flavor added. Okay, the next mushroom that I would like to talk about real quickly is the club coral. I like to call it an orange trumpet because that's easier for, for me. But anyways, the club coral is the Clavaria delphis trunca <laughs> truncatus. I dare you to say that 10 times quickly. Clavaria delphis truncatus. It is going to be a pale yellow to to orange colored club or trumpet shaped mushroom and these are a distant relatives of the chanterelle so oftentimes you might look at it and investigate it thinking you maybe found a chanterelle but then you realize this doesn't look like it so what is it it very well could be the club coral you are looking at um it will uh, also fruit at similar times. So it's while you're looking for the chanterelles, your eyes will be drawn to these trumpets. Um, it tapers at the base and becomes paler in color as it goes to the base, uh, turning into a very pale yellow or even a white color as it gets all the way to the bottom of that stipe. Um, it has wrinkles around the cap that are more subtle than a chanterelle has, so you kind of have to look closely um, to see them. Uh, the flesh that's on the inside will be white, but as it gets up towards the very top of the cap, it becomes actually hollow. So when you squish on the top, it feels like you're just, it's just going to break apart. And it actually will if you squish too hard. So just be, be gentle with it. You don't want to waste your food. Uh, it does have a really sweet flavor. Um, and when you do find these guys, you tend to find them in a large abundance. So you could easily make a meal out of them. I would think they would make a really good soup. I did go ahead and add them in to um, a stir fry that I am going to uh, picture for you guys here. It was delicious. First, I dry sauteed these mushrooms. I cleaned them with very little water um, because I don't want them to become slimy. And then I dry saute them over the fire um, on a skillet and wait until most of the water or all of the water has come out of them, stirring uh, relatively frequently. Uh, and then after about, you know, eight minutes to 10 minutes, usually that part is complete. At this point, I'll add some oil, I'll add garlic, I'll add a little bit of seasoning salt, and then I will cook them down for another eight, maybe 10 minutes. So they've been cooking for at least 15, if not 20 minutes. Um, and then at the very end, I just uh, boiled up some ramen noodles and I added them to my mushroom concoction and I did mix in one of the packets of the chicken ramen flavoring to it as well and a little bit of chili powder or uh, excuse me, red chili flakes just to spice it up a bit and um, the the person that was with me that taste tested it with me said that it was absolutely delicious and would have again and does recommend. So thank you for tuning in with me. Thank you for learning something new. And I will check back with you with new videos in the future, both in foraging identification as well as survivalism skills in the wilderness, for, um, food preservation, uh, from the garden all of these videos to come please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye